Hi guys, welcome back to Metal Magic. Today we're going to talk about tools for building your metal airplane. Hi, I'm Paul Dye, back here on the Metal Magic series, and I want to show you some of the tools that we use to build metal airplanes. Now, we're going to group these into a few different areas. And one thing I want you to remember is that everybody starts out with a basic toolkit. Then as they start building their airplane, they start adding tools. There is a never-ending list of tools that you can use to build airplanes. Not that you need to use, but that you can use. There are going to be some specialty tools that you've never seen before. A lot of them are going to look like your common household tools because they are. But let's just start talking about what it takes to drill holes. So you need some sort of a drill motor. And traditionally, airplanes are built with air drills. One of the reasons is we want very high speeds. And, and uh, air drills give you very high speeds for drilling aluminum. Um, nowadays, electric drills can give you those same high speeds. So it's really up to you, depending upon how much noise you want to use and how easy it is to work with. Um, in our shop, we have a couple of air drills with the common sizes of drills already installed, tightened down, and they just live that way. So if I need a number 30, I grab the red drill and I hook it up to an air hose and I drill. Um, and if I am going to be doing a lot of changing, I'll use the electric drill because it's got a quick change truck, uh, chuck. So that just makes life a little bit easier. There are specialty tools that you might want, like an angle drill. These can be invaluable to get into tight places. They're also not very cheap. Um, this is an angle air drill, and it has a very, very compact head and screw-on bits. But you can also buy attachments that will go into your regular drill. So if you're building your first airplane and maybe the only one you're going to build, you can probably get by with the attachment and skip spending $400 for an air angle drill. Drill bits. You're going to need a certain number of drill bits. Now drill bits um, for airplanes, metal airplanes, are going to generally be uh, number 40, number 30, and then a wide variety of, of things for specialty screws. But a 40 and a 30 will get you most of what you need. Um, it doesn't hurt to have a complete box of drills with a drill index so that when you need that odd size drill you can go ahead and find just that one um, and if you break one you can buy just the drill you need to replenish your set so those are good things to have the other kind of drill that you're going to use a lot of or use a lot will be step drills buy good ones um, they're not cheap but once you have a good set you'll be able to drill any size hole uh, above the small ones and, and go precisely to the size diameter hole you need for, uh, for uh, specific um, tasks. The last little tool I want to show you about drilling is a center punch. This is an automatic center punch. Um, it, I always recommend that you center punch a hole once you've measured, marked it with an X with your fine line marker, that you center punch it so that when you start the hole with the drill, the drill bit doesn't wander. All right? That's the basics of tools for drilling. Okay, so drilling holes is one thing. We also have to shape metal. So we're not going to go into the complete wide world of metal shaping tools here, but there are a few that you're going to see over and over again when you're building a metal airplane. Um, first is cutting. Um, we actually don't use cutting shears very often. More often we're going to use the big power tools, we're going to use uh, the bandsaw, we're going to use grinders and things like that, but occasionally you'll want cutters and they come in left hand and right hand versions and they're red and green respectively and yes you're probably going to need both, uh, but they come in most tool sets and they're not very expensive. So occasionally you'll use metal shears. Then there are a variety of tools which I can represent with this, which are a seamer, something that you can bend edges with, you can bend little bits, and you've got a broad mouth that you can grab and you can make a nice, nice even edge with. Um, that's kind of cutting and shaping. One of the things you're going to do a lot on a metal airplane these days, like an RV, is dimpling. And I'll just show you quickly, you'll want a whole set of dimple dies. So these are dimple dies, and there is a male and a female. You'll put these in a squeezer 
or a C-frame or something else that you'll see later on in the series. And they will actually create dimples for the countersunk rivets so that they sit nice and flush. So you'll end up with a whole set of dimple dies. And one of the things you're going to discover is that you're always modifying tools. And a lot of times you'll have a tool that you've taken a dimple die and you've had to grind an edge off to get it close to a flange or something. Modifying tools is sometimes hard for the uninitiated when you've just paid a lot for the tool and now I'm going to make a mess of it, but it's just part of the life. The next thing you're going to think about is deburring. And deburring um, is a process of taking all the burrs off the edge of a piece of metal or off of holes that you've drilled. So this is an edge deburring tool which you draw along the edge of a piece of sheet metal and it catches both sides at the same time. Once you've learned how to use that, it's a really useful little tool. Um, this is a hole deburring tool that you use, put in the hole and spin it once or twice and, and it'll give you, it'll take that nice, uh, nice edge off the hole. Uh, but you have to be careful with these because it's really easy to over, to over deburr and actually countersunk the hole. Um, you'll find these kind of, uh, the Shaviv tool, um, which goes inside the hole and when you spin it, you can actually deburr, deburr the inside as well as the outside. And again, you can over counter, you can over deburr with these, but they're really, really handy if you get, have to get to the back side of a hole that, um, that you can't reach. This is my favorite deburring tool of all. It's a, a one hole uh, deburring bit, which you can buy from the various uh, um, uh, aircraft tool suppliers. And you put it in an inexpensive Black & Decker type uh, electric screwdriver and it turns nice and slow and about three turns and you'll have deburred the hole just about perfectly. So these are really inexpensive. The, the, the bit probably costs more than the, than the driver. And the last thing I want to show, this is representative of a die grinder and you'll find straight die grinders and angled die grinders and you'll put various um, different grits of sandpaper or Scotch-Brite on the end. And you can use these for deburring and you can also, also use these for shaping metal. So this is a really, really hand, handy power tool, air tool, uh, for, uh, for helping you shape your metal parts. So now, once you've cut your metal and you've deburred your metal and you've drilled your metal, you're gonna have to fasten your metal together. And that's generally done with rivets with a metal airplane. Uh, yes, you're gonna use a lot of screws, but that's a different topic. Those for removable things. Once you've riveted two parts together, they are permanently attached. And there are a couple of different ways to make rivets work. Basically, you need to squash the rivet. You put it through the hole, you've got a factory head on one side, and you've got a shop head that you're gonna form in the other. And you've gotta you've got squash that either by squeezing it or by hammering it with, a, uh, with a, a, a rivet gun. So this is a typical rivet gun, and it'll have different rivet sets which you'll put in the tip. And there are a huge assortment of rivet sets. You'll probably have a basic set that comes in your basic toolkit that'll, that'll be everything you need to build a particular airplane. Um, but, and you can also get 1X, 2X, and 3X guns, which have different levels of force that they'll, that they'll uh, exert. Generally speaking, a 2X gun will build just about any two-seat airplane you're out there working on. Um, you'll have rivet sets which work on uh, on uh, round head rivets or that give you nice flat heads. So you'll need that. And in concert with the rivet gun, you have to have a bucking bar or two or three or 10 or 12. Um, the, it's all the rage these days to have tungsten bucking bars. They're outstanding. They're very heavy um, and mass is what you're looking for when you're setting a rivet. So they're very compact for their weight. Um, they come in different shapes. Most people these days will buy a set of these two, which, uh, which um, will get you almost every place you need to go. Uh, you can also find deals on tungsten on the internet. Uh, this was an a, a, a aircraft or a helicopter blade counterweight, which someone was selling a whole bunch of these for, for a low price. So you'll need those. And the last kind of riveting you'll do with a gun might be back riveting. So you'll need a back riveting tool, which gives you the ability to actually drive the, directly on the, uh, the shop head um, and usually comes in any kind of an aircraft toolkit. The other kind of, of rivet uh, setting that we do is to squeeze. And to squeeze the rivet takes a lot of force. You can buy a hand squeezer or you can use a pneumatic squeezer. Either one 
is going to have interchangeable heads. And these different heads, or yokes, will give you a different reach. The depth you can reach in from the edge of a, uh, of a piece of sheet to get in. Or they'll get you around a longeron, a stringer, something like that. Um, and then you generally want to use the shortest yoke that you can get to work the, do the job because you're going to be exerting about 30,000 pounds of force and it will actually bend this slightly and you, give you an angled rivet. So I like a good pneumatic squeezer. They're, um, they're uh, a little more pricey but, but hook them up with air and once you get a good tease on the trigger you can really do a nice job. The last kind of riveting that you're probably going to do will be pulled rivets. A lot of airplanes are built entirely with pulled rivets. We try not to use the term pop rivet because that's kind of has the connotation of, of uh, the hardware store rivets. But pulled rivets um, are generally done either with a hand riveting tool like this where you squeeze it or with if you're going to build a whole airplane of pulled rivets you're going to want a pneumatic squeezer and these work really quick. Pull the trigger, you know, hook them up to your airline and you'll get a really good, uh, good rivet set. So those are some of the basic tools that we're going to use to build a metal airframe. You're going to see the details of how to use them in upcoming elements of this series and uh, we'll probably even show you a few more specialty tools as, that, as, as, uh, as we progress. Um, one of the things we haven't talked about is how you're going to power some of these power tools and so we need to talk a little bit about air compressors and we'll talk about that next. So if you're going to use air tools, you're going to need a compressor. And there are a wide variety of compressors that are out there that you might consider for various purposes and reasons. All going to depend upon where you're building, how much building you plan to do, and how quiet you want things to be. Um, most people who are going to build at least one airplane, maybe two, are going to have a good shop, are going to use a large tank compressor with a compressor that actually sits on top of a big steel tank to give them enough capacity so that they don't have to stop and pause when they're using rotary tools for the thing to recharge. Um, they're going to be powered by 220 volts, so you're going to need a larger uh, service for that. If you're building in a one-bedroom apartment, you're going to want a much smaller compressor, something that is hopefully quieter, and it'll run on 110 volts. In general, think about these two items. There's oiled compressors and oilless compressors. The small, portable, little compressors are generally oilless, and they're very noisy. The oiled compressors are larger and they're going to make um, less noise, but they're going to, you're going to have to find a place for them. Right? So think about that and most people get by just fine on their first airplane build with a portable, uh, maybe a 30 gallon tank, uh, oiled compressor that's electric that can be run on 110 or 220. Think about what you have in your shop and what's going to be most convenient. And then don't be surprised if later on you go and buy another bigger compressor. Okay, so we've talked about tools. The question now is where do you find them? The truth of the matter is you're not going to find specialty aircraft metal fabrication tools at the local big box stores. They just don't have them. That means you're going to be looking at aircraft tool suppliers. Now the question is do you want to buy a, a full kit or do you want to buy them piecemeal? Your aircraft kit manufacturer will probably have recommendations on suppliers and specific toolkits that will give you everything you need to get a great start on your particular kit. You can also buy them individually, but Aircraft Spruce has a tremendous number of tools. They also have kits and there are other suppliers out there as well. You can also think about reselling your tools if you decide to stop building and you'll make back a lot of the money. So, don't worry about the fact that you sink some money in tools, they have value. Okay, that wraps up our initial look at aircraft metal building tools. As we go through this series, we'll probably introduce a few more for specific tasks. Thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified of additional segments, and thanks for watching.